Hi, I'm Rick Streaker, National Training Coordinator for Packard. In this segment of the Packard Academy, we're going to continue our discussion on selecting the proper replacement motor. And we're going to focus on the difference between multi-speed motors and multi-horsepower motors. Now, in looking at the motors, they appear to be very, very similar. And if you were to look at the leads, you wouldn't notice a difference either. It's not until you start looking at the characteristics on the nameplates of the motors that you determine that the one is a multi-speed and the other is a multi-horsepower motor. What's the difference between these motors? If we were to look at the connections of the motors, they'd be very similar. As we talked about in a previous segment about three-speed motors, we had talked about tap windings in that main winding of the motor. A tap winding is the introduction of a lead at various segments of the winding of that motor. And we use just portions of that motor. When we look at a three-speed motor, based upon the positions of those tap windings, when we have one load put on that motor, then we will see different speeds between the different connections of those tap windings, again, with the one load on the motor. As I use a medium or a low tap winding, because I have the same load on the motor, and because those taps result in a weaker torque at that particular winding, then the motor will change its speed. With a multi-horsepower motor, this motor is designed to be able to operate different loads on that shaft. So I could operate a half horsepower load and a three-quarter horsepower load, for example, on the same motor. And still the motor will not overheat or present a problem in performance. Let's look at the name plates a little bit closer. And let's see what the true characteristics are that differ the multi-speed motor from the multi-horsepower motor. When we look at the name plates, again, we need to assume that on the multi-speed motor, we have one load that will be applied to the shaft of that motor. That load is the only load that will result in this motor operating properly. When I put that load on it, in this case, this particular motor is a half horsepower motor. Because it's a half horsepower, the load that I apply to the shaft should be a half horsepower load. When I run that motor on high speed, it'll operate, in this case, at 1075 RPM. When I operate it at medium speed, it will drop about 100 RPM or so. And when I connect it on low speed, again, it will drop about 100 RPM from the medium speed. To determine in your application if the motor is operating properly, you have to measure the amps of this. And when you measure the amps of the motor, you measure the amps with it connected on high. There is only one amp rating shown on this motor. The full load amps represent this motor operating a half horsepower load on high speed. Now to use a multi-horsepower motor, it means that we'll be able to put different loads on that motor. Because we can put different loads on the motor, we need to be able to determine if the motor is operating properly with that specific load on it. To determine that, we need amp ratings for high, medium high, medium low, and low. And that would actually represent the horsepower load that we put on those particular motors. So to determine if it's operating properly, if we have it connected 
with the greatest horsepower that the motor can handle. We'd connect it on high, check the amps on high. That motor should then operate at the amp rating shown for that appropriate horsepower or connection. When I run that on medium high, I've changed the load. I've gone to a smaller load. Now I have to be able to make certain that with that smaller load, the motor is operating properly. I check the amps on the medium high connection. That then will tell me if the motor is operating properly with that medium high connection and the change of load. And we do that for the medium low and the low speeds as well as we change the load going on the motor. The motors are designed very similarly, but it's important that the tap windings on the multi-horsepower motor are placed precisely on that winding so we get a certain amp performance out of that motor with that specific load on it. When you take this information and combine it with previous segments of selecting the proper replacement motor. It will help you to identify the correct motor to use when replacing a defective product. Thanks for participating in the Packard Academy. Again, view our previous segments on this to help you to get the most out of replacing properly. Thanks.